Hello and welcome. I've made this presentation as a solution to a selected homework problem that I received quite a few questions about. Hopefully it will give you help on how we derive the solution to this particular question as well as some insight on how we solve these types of problems explicitly in general. I've made the presentation and included arrows on each slide so if there's a step that you feel comfortable with that you don't need uh, further explanation then go ahead and click the arrow and continue on to the next slide. Thank you so much for watching and let's jump right in. So we're asked to find an explicit solution for the following initial value problem. y prime is equal to x y cubed times the quantity 1 plus x squared to the negative 1 half with y of 0 equal to 1. So there's a few things that we want to remember and consider when solving these types of problems. The first is an explicit solution means we want our answer to be in the form y equals. In previous problems, we were okay leaving it as y squared or in some other forms. But when we're asked to solve explicitly, it means that we need to manipulate our equation down to uh, the form y equals. The next, as it's an initial value problem, means that our answer should have no c terms. C terms means it's a general solution. And when we're given an initial value problem, we're going to work through the general solution and find the particular solution, which leads me to my next point, we will have both. Um, sometimes we're asked to find a solution or a general solution, but if we're given an initial value, that means we should have a general and a particular solution. And the steps that we're going to use to solve are as follows. First, we're going to separate our given equation. Now this is because the equation we're given is a separable differential equation. This will change depending on the type of equation that we have. Next, we're going to integrate both sides. Then we'll determine the general solution. We'll use our initial value conditions to solve for c. We'll manipulate it into explicit form. And finally, and this is important, we need to test our initial conditions to find the particular solution. One thing to note, 4 and 5 can be switched. You can manipulate it into explicit form first and then solve for C. But this leads to some problems and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the presentation. I like to solve for C first for a couple of reasons. One, I find it's easier before we manipulate it into explicit form. And also, we can make mistakes in when we're solving for C and how we treat our arbitrary constant. So those are some things to look at as we continue. Alright, so let's begin. We start with step one, which is separate. In a separable differential equation, we have an equation in two terms. It's often y and x, or y and t. And our goal is to group all the terms onto separate sides so that we can integrate easily. So this is what we're given, and we want to recall that y prime is the same as dy dx. So we can multiply both sides by dx and then divide both sides by y cubed. And now you can see that we have all of our y terms are dy and our y cubed on the left hand side and all of our x terms on the right hand side. So we can easily move on to our next step, which is integration. So now we move right along to step two, which is to integrate. We have separated uh, our terms into either side, and now we can integrate both sides with respect to the given variable. So we're going to start with the left-hand side because it's a little bit more straightforward and easier to integrate. So we have the integral of dy over y cubed. And remember that 1 over y cubed is the same as y to the negative 3. So we can just use the power method, which is given by the integral of x to the n dx is equal to x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. So we have y to the negative 3 plus 1 over negative 3 plus 1 plus c1. This is because we have no values um, or limits of integration. So we need to include our arbitrary constant. And we end up with y to the negative 2 over negative 2 plus c1. We've successfully integrated the left-hand side. So let's move forward to the right. Now that we've successfully integrated our left-hand side, we can move on to the right-hand side and integrate that. So our right-hand side, we have the integral of x times the quantity 1 plus x squared to the negative 1 half dx. And we're going to use substitution to solve this. 
We'll let u equal 1 plus x squared, then the derivative of u du is 2x dx, and we're going to substitute that right back in to get the integral of du over 2 over u to the 1 half. This is just straightforward calculus. We'll use the power method. We take out the 1 half, that's a constant. We have the integral of u to the negative 1 half du. Uh, we use the power method to get uh, our 2 and our 1 half will cancel out, and we'll end up with u to the 1 half plus our arbitrary constant, c2. Substituting back in our u, we see that we have the quantity 1 plus x squared to the 1 half plus c2, and we can move on to our next step. Okay, so let's go ahead and recap what we have found. We've integrated both sides to get our left-hand side of y to the negative 2 over negative 2 plus c1 is equal to the quantity 1 plus x squared to the 1 half plus c2, which we found by integrating the right-hand side. And we, In these types of problems, we always want to simplify as much as possible, so we begin by combining our arbitrary constant c terms to obtain y to the negative 2 over negative 2 equals the quantity 1 plus x squared to the 1 half plus c. Now this is a general solution. Um, it's a form of a general solution, but I like to simplify it a little bit more. It's important that if you're asked to just find the general solution, you want it to be as, sim as simplified as possible. But I also found that by simplifying it more in this step, when we go to solve for our c, it's going to be a little bit easier and more straightforward. So I'm going to multiply each side by negative 2 to get y to the negative 2 equals negative 2 times the quantity 1 plus x squared to the 1 half plus c. Notice the c absorbed the multiplication of the negative 2. So this is because negative 2c is equal to c. I encourage you to try it out. Go ahead and plug in the initial value and find what you get for c. Um, for the first equation and find what you get for c for the second equation. They're going to be different values of c, but you'll see that once you take that step and multiply both sides by negative 2, you're going to end up with the same equation. So it doesn't matter what form our general form is when we plug in our initial value conditions to get the c. It's all, as long as we've done all the steps correctly, it's all going to come out nicely. But when we are presenting a general solution, we do want it to be in the most simplified form as possible. So that's also important to remember. So let's go ahead and, and move forward and solve for C. So before we solve for C, I do want to make some notes about the general solution. As I spoke about in the last slide, we have multiple forms of the general solution, and this is the general solution that I'm going to use because it is simplified and it will be straightforward for solving for C. Um, it's an acceptable general solution. But I do want to note, because I saw a lot of errors in this step, that you can go ahead and solve explicitly before you solve for C. You can get to that Y equals and then plug in the initial conditions to solve for your C. But we have to be extremely careful how we treat our arbitrary constant. So here's one example of an error that I saw quite often. Many people got to this step. y squared equals 1 over negative 2 times the quantity 1 plus x squared to the 1 half plus c. This is incorrect. I hope you guys can look at it and see why it's incorrect. Um, I'm kind of put a little bit of thought into it. but. If you did this step, you did not treat the C correctly. You have not treated this arbitrary constant correctly. So if we solve for C first when given an initial value problem, we can avoid that. We can avoid thinking about, can I combine it? If I multiply by negative 2, does the negative 2 absorb into the C? If I uh, divide both sides by y squared, or, or however you went about solving this, what happens to the C then? So if you go ahead and solve for C first, you can avoid making those types of errors, which is why I recommend it. So go ahead and look at this and, and try to determine why this is not correct. Okay, so moving right along, we're on step four, solve for C. And this is our big difference between a general and particular solution is our arbitrary constant C. The way we can think about it is if we think back to our direction fields, we had 
lots of different possible solutions. And we talked about one of our questions in the homework was to think about if an initial value changed the behavior uh, of our differential equation. And oftentimes, most times, it will. So our general solution is when we look at the direction field, it could be any of those curves. And our particular solution is when we pick one curve because we know something about the value at zero or the initial at time zero or our initial value. So we have y to the negative 2 equals negative 2 times the quantity 1 plus x squared to the 1 half plus c. And we're given the initial value of y of 0 is equal to 1. This means that when y is 1, x is 0. So we go ahead and plug this in and solve for c. We put 1 in for all our y terms and 0 in for all our x terms. And we find, moving through the steps, that c is equal to 3. So now we have a particular solution, and we have 3 here for the c. But this is not the end, because this is not explicit. So we have a few more steps to do before we can complete the problem. All right, so our next step is going to be to manipulate it into explicit form. This is just straight algebra. All we're doing is solving for y. But one thing that's very important to consider is that when we take the square root of both sides, we have to consider both the positive and negative values. So for instance, if we have x squared equals 1, then x could be positive 1 or negative 1 because when we square them, both of them are 1. And this doesn't change. This doesn't change for differential equations. It doesn't change for anything. But in a lot of courses, you won't have to consider the negative value because you're thinking about distance, um, like when you're modeling or something else like that. A lot of times we don't have to consider the negative value. But in solving a differential equation, we absolutely do. We have when we take the square root of both sides, we have to consider both the positive and negative values. And we'll talk a little bit about that when we move on to our final step. So I've just converted the y to the negative 2 to 1 over y squared, multiplied both sides by y squared, and then divided by this large quantity taking the square root of both sides, remembering both the positive and negative values, we get y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 over negative 2 times the quantity 1 plus x squared to the 1 half plus 3. Now, this is an explicit form, which is what we were asked to do, but it is not a particular solution. We have two solutions here. We have y equals the positive square root and y equals the negative square root. So we still have one more step to go before we can complete this problem, which means that we need to test our initial conditions to determine what one, particular means one, so what one solution fits the differential equation and the initial values that we were given. So now we move on to step six, our final step, which is to test the initial conditions and find our one particular solution. We have found a solution, but we have both the plus or minus values. Since we're given the initial values, we can test using those initial values and determine which one is valid um, given our differential equation and our solution. So in order to do that, we just set y equal to 1 and x equal to 0, and we plug it into uh, our explicit solution that we found and solve. We have 0 squared is 0 plus 1 is 1. Subtracting, we have 1 equals plus or minus 1. Now, obviously, 1 is not equal to negative 1, so this is only valid when it is positive square root. So now that we've found that, we know which of our solutions is the correct particular solution. Now that we've found which is the correct particular solution, our work is done. Through the steps, we separated and we integrated both sides. We solved for C, we put it into explicit form, and then we tested our initial conditions. We now have found the explicit solution for the given differential equation with the initial value conditions. And this is what we started out with, our differential equation and our initial value. And we found our solution to be y equals 1 over the square root of negative 2 times the quantity 1 plus x squared to the 1 half plus 3. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to email me. And thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.